This is one of the most bizarre, unexplained encounters on record. Was this being an extraterrestrial, interdimensional, ghost, giant, cryptid, a giant man in a bizarre physics-bending suit, or just a hoax? Sam the Sandown Clown became known to us in Volume 6 of the British Unidentified Flying Object Research Association's journal. If you'd like to read it yourself, I've included the link in the description. The high strangeness of this case has created some confusion in the following decades, with important details being left out of most retellings. Our story begins with a man who wishes to remain anonymous, known to us as Mr. Y, in order to protect his identity as well as his daughter's. Tuesday, October 20th, 1970. At roughly 7 p.m., Mr. Y was driving on Seaview, heading to ride on his way to see a friend. As he reached St. Helens, he realized that he was not alone. Hovering silently over the trees to his right was an enormous UFO shining with multicolored lights. Mr. Y was shocked by the sheer size of the object as it hovered low over the swamp. He stopped his car and watched the object as it seemed to hover aimlessly over the river Yar. The UFO had a ring of at least seven lights, each one a clearly defined orb, which Mr. Y said were bright like red cherries, with white and turquoise lights in between. Mr. Y continued driving, and the UFO began to travel parallel to his car. After Mr. Y passed St. Helens, the UFO cut across behind his car and descended slowly. The red spherical lights reduced from seven to four and began to rotate. Mr. Y then stopped his car again and used a flashlight to attempt to signal to the object. This lasted 10 minutes, and as Mr. Y signaled to the UFO, it continued to hover aimlessly, moving backwards and forwards without stopping, still making no noise. Mr. Y then continued on his way, all the while the UFO continued to follow. Mr. Y's friend came out of his house and he too saw the UFO's red lights, which he described as playing hide and seek among the trees. As Mr. Y continued on, the UFO vanished behind the trees and the witnesses could no longer see them. Like many witnesses to close encounters, Mr. Y was haunted by the objects in numerous encounters after his first. Occasionally, Mr. Y would see one of the red orbs stalking his car or hovering motionlessly in the sky. He had the unnerving feeling that the objects were observing his movements, watching him. March 1st, 1972. Mr. Y was at Compton Bay, close to the shore, when there was a sudden tidal surge. The waves drove Mr. Y up to the cliffside, where he could see that the surge was caused by a droning, unidentified craft. 40 feet away from him, just beneath the surface of the water, Mr. Y was able to see two yellow lights on the object, which gave him the feeling of being watched. He stated the lights were quote, peering up at me like the eyes of some horrible sea monster, unquote. The yellow eyes, as Mr. Y called them, vanished and the tide began to subside, leaving no trace of the object. There are many commonalities between Mr. Y's experience and many other close encounters with UFOs. For example, the way the UFO seemed to rotate, the multicolored lights, the lack of noise, the seemingly intelligent way in which the craft began to stalk Mr. Y's car. There's also the fact that the vast majority of UFO encounters take place near bodies of water. Mr. Y never told his daughter of his close encounters, which would make his daughter's own experiences all the more bizarre. On a Tuesday in early May of 1973, Mr. Y's daughter, Faye, a seven-year-old girl, and her friend, a young boy around her age, were playing near Lake Common, Sandown, at around four o'clock. Suddenly, the two children began to hear an eerie wailing that they could compare only to an ambulance siren. The kids followed the wailing to a swampy meadow near the rarely used Sandown Airport, when suddenly the noise stopped. The children were walking across a wooden bridge over a small river when suddenly a blue gloved hand with only three fingers appeared from beneath the bridge. They saw that there was a strange figure standing in the river, fumbling with a book which the being dropped into the water and then splashed around trying to retrieve it. 
He was seven feet tall, with no neck. He wore a strange, torn outfit, white pants, and a green tunic with a red collar that connected to his pointed yellow hat. Atop the hat was a black knob with what looked like wooden antennae on both sides. He had three digits on each foot, much like his hands. The children watched the figure walk to a metallic windowless hut. This being had a very strange gait, moving in a hopping motion with its knees raised very high. Being children, they didn't think much of this and wandered off. But soon, the entity returned, carrying a microphone. The wailing resumed, but many orders of magnitude louder, so much so that the boy was frightened and began to run away. The wailing ended, and the being spoke into the microphone. Hello? Are you still there? He sounded friendly to the children, so they approached to speak to the being. The being took out his book and wrote in it to communicate with the children. He showed the book to Fay. The words were written out of order, so the being pointed to each word, so Fay could read his message. Hello, and I am All Colors Sam. The children got closer and found that All Colors Sam could speak without his microphone, although in an unclear, mumbling voice, as if he was not properly opening his mouth. In fact, All Colors Sam's lips never moved when he spoke. His face was paper white with triangular holes for eyes and a brown square for a nose. Round markings were on his cheeks and red hair fell onto his forehead. Sam asked the children about themselves. What exactly? We were never given the details. The children then asked Sam about his torn and ripped clothing and he explained that he only had one set so he had no choice but to wear them. Because of his strange features, the unmoving yellow lips, snow white face, triangular eyes, they asked if he was really a man. He chuckled and said no. They then asked if he was a ghost. Sam replied, well, not really, but I am, in a sort of way. What are you then? You know, paradoxically, Sam went on to state that he had no name. He also said that there are others like him, and drew a sketch of one of his kind. All Colors Sam explained that he's afraid of people, and feared that they may hurt him. He also indicated that if he was attacked, he would not fight back. Sam then invited the children into his hut. They crawled through a flap, and saw that there were two floors. The walls were blue and green, covered in a pattern of dials whatever that means. On the floor was an electric heater and plain wooden furniture. Sam took off his hat, revealing round white ears and reddish brown hair. He told the children that he has a camp on the mainland and that he forages and eats berries. We are then given a bizarre explanation of how Sam eats. Sam placed a berry inside of his ear and thrust his head forward and the berry then reappeared in one of his triangular eyes. He thrust his head forward again, and the berry traveled to his mouth. The children stayed inside Sam's hut for an hour, talking with him, though what exactly they spoke of, again, we aren't told. Eventually, they said their goodbyes and left Sam's hut. The children raced to find the first adult they could find, and when they found a man, they told him that they've just seen a ghost, but he just laughed at them. The children were convinced they saw either a ghost or someone in an elaborate costume. June 2nd, 1973, Faye finally told her father, Mr. Y, of her strange experience. She became very upset when her father said that she must have made up the story. Mr. Y later spoke to the boy who was with Faye who corroborated their encounter. Aside from being just imagination or some sort of elaborate hoax, Perhaps this was some kind of rare, shared hallucination. Although bizarre, some elements of his daughter's story felt true to Mr. Y, especially considering his own encounters, which again, he hadn't told his daughter about. Mr. Y stated, I get the impression that Faye was somehow taken into a bubble of alien reality created by this strange personage. He told them he had just made the hut. Also, Faye told me that while they were talking to this ghost, Two workmen nearby were repairing a post. They paid no attention to the weird charade, as though they could not see it. 
this last detail of the workers being somehow oblivious to this strange occurrence, this is an oddly consistent detail with several other UFO encounters, as if some of these entities have an ability to manipulate perception itself. In the 45 years since, no other encounter with this being or a similar being has been reported. It's really impossible to know exactly what happened here. Was Faye's experience connected to her father's UFO encounters? Did Sam exist? Was Sam a human or something else entirely? I for one am not necessarily saying that this really happened or that it happened as it's told to us. There's no real way to verify the story, but it's still very strange and interesting nonetheless. It's definitely among the strangest stories of its type. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and share the video as it really helps.